All right, welcome in. It is another edition of the On The Mic podcast, and uh, I've indirectly heard this guy uh, multiple times when I was working on the Ock and Brock show at Sirius XM, but I was never doing the interviewing. Today I am, and uh, pretty great way to start a Friday. I mean, not start a Friday. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon where I'm at, but uh, he's taking time out of his Friday to talk to me. Uh, he will face Anthony Pettis at PFL, uh, one of season uh, of their 2021 season. He is Clay Cassius, Clay Collard. Clay, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely, man. So you're, you've got such like an incredible story. And I think the thing that draws me into doing this podcast and talking to fighters is every fighter's got a different story. Like, you, you look at every other sport in, in the world, especially the mainstream sports, like basketball players are basketball players. They, they normally are cut from the same cloth. Man, you, you had a, a run with the UFC. You moved over to boxing. Last year, we'll get into that. You absolutely just crushed everyone's hopes and dreams. And now you're back with the PFL and you're doing both, man. What, what moment was it for you where you were like, I'm doing both? I'm going to find a place where I can do both. I'm going to continue to stay active and I'm going to continue to work on my craft in a cage and in the boxing ring. Um, honestly, it was my coach's idea to start boxing again. Um, he, he had this idea that boxing would help me, um, in, in mixed martial arts. Um, he, he said it'll help me with uh, my timing, my speed, my eyes, like just just it'll help me be a, a better fighter all around. So, um, you know, I, I trust him. I, I trust my coach very much. So I, uh, I said, yeah, let's give it a shot. You know, we started boxing a little bit here and there and um, started to have success. So. Uh, yeah, we just kept at it. I, I did sign with PFL in 2000, like the at very end of 2019. Uh, we were looking forward to the 2020 season that got canceled um, for the year. And so I, I just continued boxing. So what was that like for you? Like, obviously, COVID changed a lot of things for everyone in this world, you know, fight game or not. Um, but you know that you have an opportunity at one point to continue to stay active in the boxing world, even though they took a little longer to come back. PFL, you know, postponed, canceled their 2020 season. Was there ever a moment where you're like, I should, maybe I'd take some time off, just heal, just kind of, you know, just do your own thing? Or was it super important to you to get back into the boxing ring and keep competing? Um, Matt, I'm a fighter. <laughs> I love to fight, you know? So yeah. um, that's, that's I, I do this for a living, you know? Um, it's something I, I, I really enjoy and I love doing. And, and so, um, I, I wanted to stay active, you know, um, I was very blessed to be able to be as active as I was with the pandemic and how, um, the year played out. There, there was a lot of fighters that were just sitting the, the entire year. And I was, I, I believe one of, if not the most active fighter in 2020, so. Yeah, and five and one in boxing last year. Um, at what point during training did you did you become the zero snatcher and you just started? You're like, you know what? Anyone they throw my way that thinks I'm an easy win or I, I'm gonna be the guy that elevates them to the next level, you just became a prospect killer in 2020. Yeah, man, I work hard every single day, you know, and uh, I've been boxing since I was 10 years old, so. Um, I mean, people overlooked me thinking I'm just an MMA fighter and that I didn't know nothing about boxing. And that's just not the case, you know? So, um, I, I, I'll take any fight and I believe I could win any fight. So, um, yeah, you know, it's just doing what I love to do. And, and, and if people want to overlook me, that's on them, you know, I'm going to show up and I'm going to fight to win every single time. So. Not only did the people overlook you, but you mentioned that, you know, there were a lot of fighters who sat out, whether it be MMA or boxing, a lot of fighters sat out, but specifically in boxing, do you think the fact that there are obviously all the time contract disputes, there were, you know, uh, people sitting out because of COVID, other people not able to fight, you know, for other, you know, visa issues and stuff like that. Do you believe that other people's reluctancy to get in there and, and fight helped you take advantage of the opportunities that were presented to you? 
Yeah, man, I'm I'm sure everything played a part. I'm sure the the pandemic played a part. Um, you know, people say now people, uh, you know, it, it gave me it, it gave me a chance to kind of get known in the boxing world. You know, um, I, I think the fights I took um were a huge part of it as well i was i was fighting undefeated guys top prospects and and i was beating them so i think i think that played a huge part in in it as well it's just yeah but i, I definitely think you know the whole year and how it played out at all it, i mean i think everything happens for a reason and so well you were one of my favorite stories of 2020 and i'm not just saying that because you're here um it was a lot of fun like I, i'll be straight up honest with you man like i'll watch i'm 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 such an MMA guy. I've become a casual boxing fan, so I only watch, like, the big fights. But, man, you grabbed my attention very early on, and I, I didn't miss a single one of yours. And you made watching boxing during the week, uh, you know, for top rank and everywhere else, you just made it a little bit more fun and entertaining. So I appreciate it as a combat sports fan. Uh, I'm going to get technical here and be a nerd with you for a second. Obviously, you've been fighting your entire life. It's what you do for a living. You, you're a boxer. You're an MMA fighter. What are the, the biggest technical differences in striking from your experience having both uh, between the two? Um, this, the distance plays, plays a huge part in, uh, in, in a difference between mixed martial arts and boxing. Uh, boxing, it's a lot closer range that you're fighting at. Where uh, in mixed martial arts, I, I have more tools I can kick. I, you know, I, I, and I can keep my distance either further away or closer by grappling so just distance control is a is a huge part of boxing and it's a lot different than mma because you don't have the same amount of tools so uh, that's probably the biggest difference in my opinion um man those boxers hands are so fast man um you know that that that's that's what they work is their hand speed and, and their power. And, you know, they don't got to worry about kicking or grappling or, or anything else. So the, I, I believe boxers hand speed is, is just net next level, you know, com compared to a lot of MMA guys. Um, yeah. Uh, boxing, you can angle your body different as well. I, I can turn away and turn my shoulder and turn my leg where uh, I do that. And, in MMA, I'm eating a leg kick, you know, or yeah, right. I'm, I'm getting shot on. And so um, ju just the way you're able to angle your body and move your body is a lot different as well. Uh, but, yeah, I think the biggest thing is the range control. How do you feel about the crossover now? You know, I, I know there's a lot more boxers trying to do MMA. Uh, MMA fighters trying to do boxing. I would say the most notable outside of yourself is someone who also signed with PFL, Clarissa Shields, you know, boxing world champion, just a, an, an incredible boxing world champion. One of the greatest, you know, not just female champions, but one of the greatest champions in, in boxing history. She's coming over to MMA. And then you have one of the best MMA fighters in UFC history, depending on who you ask and if they're Irish or not, Conor McGregor, you know, and, and, and blatantly blaming his boxing mindset on his loss to Dustin Poirier this year. So it, it, it seems like, and this is just my opinion, when boxers want to come over to MMA, it seems like there's a lot more time and patience. And I, and I want to say respect towards the, the sport. I feel like we've seen MMA fighters talk about going into boxing like they're just taking a step back because they have all the skill sets that you talked about that just going into boxing, well, I just got to focus on one thing. I'm curious as someone who's done both, what are your thoughts on the crossover? Um, I mean, it takes a special kind of person, I think, to be able to, to um, do both. I mean, Chris, Carissa Shields is, a, is a, just an amazing athlete, and I think she'll do very well in, in mixed martial arts. Um, but, you know, a lot of these MMA guys think that they, they, they know how to strike and then they get in there with a boxer and it's a totally different game, man. It's just not, it's really not the same. So, um, and I mean, it's pretty obvious coming over from the boxing side to MMA, you have to worry about wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, kicks, elbows. So 
there's a lot more dangers in that sense, but um, it just takes a special kind of person, man, to be able to do both. I think um, some people can, some people can't. So, yeah. would you like to see fighters stay in their lane in their respective sports, or do you like them trying to cross over? Um, you can be honest. It's okay. I, I mean, <laughs> I like, I like, I like to see people try to cross over because it it, it shows you the people that can and be successful at it it, it kind of sets those people apart um but who knows i think we're gonna see a lot more of it um in the future just just because that's how the fight game is gonna play out um yeah but like i said it takes a special kind of person and, and a, a lot of guys that are gonna switch over are gonna find that out so I, I promise I'm going to ask you about Anthony Pettis here in a moment, but uh, you, you talked about, you know, getting respect, you know, in the boxing community now because you've taken these fights, because you were so active, because you were kind of putting a, a halt to a lot of hype trains with these prospects. So just in your, in your humble opinion, how would you say you're now perceived in the boxing world after the 2020 that you had? Um, you know, I, I, would, I would like people to think I'm dangerous. Um, I think I'm a dangerous opponent for anybody, um, whether it's boxing or mixed martial arts. So, um, yeah, I just, like I said, man, I've been working at this since I was a little kid. So, uh, I just, uh, I want people to respect me and, and respect the fact that, you know, I can end a fight at any moment and whether it's boxing or mixed martial arts and, and I'm here to stay, you know? Well, uh, you got a nice big task in front of you here. But before we talk, Anthony Pettis, you talk about, you've mentioned multiple times that you, you're, you've been a fighter your entire life. You said you've been boxing since you were 10. This is the one thing that really stands out to me. You had your first MMA fight before you graduated high school. What, what, like, what is that like? Like, how did that, like, did you talk to anyone about that? Were you just like, I'm going to do it? And were you big man on campus in high school afterwards? Um. So it kind of happened. Um, I always knew I wanted to fight. I just never really had a plan of how I was going to get into it, you know. Um, and so wrestling season had, en had ended. Um, I was only going to a half day of school because I, I had all my credits and I had work release. And um, one of my wrestling coaches was like, man, they're doing MMA fights you know, in the next town over this weekend, you should sign up. You're 18 now, you know? And I was like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to do that. I'm going to do it. And so I just kind of signed up on a whim, you know? Um, I knocked him out in 12 seconds. And then I think I fought back-to-back -back weekends. I fought him the next weekend. I, was, I told my dad, I was like, find me another fight. Like, I, I want to do this again. So the next weekend I fought again. And then the very next weekend I fought again. So um yeah I just got thrown into the fire man uh, I went pro I, I had one amateur fight and went pro I kind of got talked into going pro um and yeah just from there it took off you know as far as uh I graduated not not too long after <laughs> you know so um I'm from a very small town and it was nice you know being from a small town and and you know starting to fight and I was beating people up, you know, and so I had a lot of uh, fans from my hometown and, and a lot of support there, which was nice. But it, yeah, it's nice to get recognition when you're not fighting in the, in the playgrounds, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you talk about like all that you've been through and what another one that stood out to me was you took your UFC uh, debut on seven days notice against Max Holloway, like. I just got to ask you straight up, but like, what makes you this guy, man? Like there, everything I, I we've talked about already, you've never said, oh, well, it, you know, this didn't go my way, or I, I just had to figure out something or like, there's been no negativity or pessimism from you. And, and I, and I can tell that you're someone who wants to stay active is always out there looking to prove a point and there's no challenge too big. Like what makes you that guy? Uh, man, that's just the way I was born, man. <laughs> um, I, I've always been competitive, even from a very young age. Um, I, I, I'm that little kid from a small town that just dreams big, you know. 
I've had big dreams, especially once I started this fighting thing. I'm, I, I want to go to the top, you know? So, um, yeah, I just, I'm a big dreamer, man. And, and I believe hard work, hard work pays off. So I've been working hard and dreaming big, man. Well, uh, obviously big dreams, you know, get, getting started off in 2021, you'll face Anthony Pettis uh, for the opening of the PFL 2021 season. Big move by the PFL to bring in Anthony Pettis. I know he's your opponent. He comes with a very respected background and championship pedigree. First thought, what was your take on, you know, Anthony signing with the PFL and just how big of a move is it for the promotion? Um, I mean, the, the dude's had an epic career so far. You know, he's won multiple belts. He's done things in, in the fight game that, that's, that nobody else has been able to do or, or, or nobody's done, you know, from – jumping off the cage and, and kicking people in the face to move into different weight classes, you know, um, he's a guy I grew up watching, you know, so, um, he has uh, about a billion followers. I'm sure, you know, people that, that support him and, and, and are, are rooting for him and going for him. So, um, signing a guy like that just elevates that promotion that much more, you know? elevates the PFL that much more. So, uh, yeah, uh, I respect the guy. He, he's done a lot for the sport, and he's done a lot in, in, in the sport. And um, as far as fighting him goes, I either wanted him or the champ first when I heard he signed. So, um, you know, that's just the, the type of person I am. I, I don't want the easy fight. I want, I want the toughest fight I can, I, I can get into, you know. That's why I do this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just saying, yeah, you know, PFL's, bring made, it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> PFL's made some, you know, big moves, you know, as, as they continue to add to the roster, Fabricio Verdum, uh, Rory McDonald, we saw him sign, um, and then obviously Pettis, but now get, basing what 2020 was for you, isn't this kind of setting up for 2021 for you to be continuing to, to just elevate your stock even higher? Because, okay, Anthony's not, you know, this highly touted prospect anymore, but he's coming in with people behind him and possibly a promotion behind him that have high aspirations. Well, you could slam that door shut right away on April 23rd. Does that get you excited for that? That's, that's all, all I'm going for, man. That's every, that's everything I'm working for is to, to boost myself up, you know, and uh, he's a veteran in the sport. He's, you know, very talented, has a very fight high IQ and, and, you know, I'm ready to bring. I'm I'm ready for him to bring it, and I'm ready to bring it. And I think it's very smart on the promotional side because I think is, this is going to be one of the most exciting mixed martial arts fights to date. You know, so. Well, I, I know I can't wait for it. How do you think having this whole year of boxing training? And I know you've done both. I'm not saying 2020 was the only time you've ever boxed in your entire life. We've we've gotten that clear. Uh, you've been doing this for you know your entire life. But how do you think specifically getting able to focus on such boxing high level training uh, this past year is going to help you in this fight against Anthony Pettis? I think the the biggest thing is that I stayed active. I think that's going to be the biggest part of it. As far as the training goes, I'm I I was always training for PFL, so I I knew I I knew I had that coming up. It, it was a big bummer that it got canceled in 2020, but um, that was always my end focus, you know? So, um, as far as the training goes, I, I've always been training like a mixed martial artist, um, even when I was boxing. So, um, the biggest thing that's going to help me is that I, I, I stayed active and, you know, I stayed competing and, and I think that's going to give me an edge. A lot of people have joined the PFL because they want that million dollars. Obviously there's no doubt people want the million dollar grand prize in the tournament. But, um, you know, you not only said, like, you're here to, you know, boost your stock and, and take yourself to another level, obviously would do that with a win over Anthony Pettis and continuing to go through this season of PFL. What would you say a win against Anthony Pettis does for you? And what message does it send not only to PFL, not only to Anthony Pettis, but to those who follow your career? Um, man, I'm not really too worried about 
I'm not really too worried about it. I'm just ready to show up and fight. Whatever happens, happens. Um, you know, I'm, I, I want people to, to know and believe that I'm the real deal. And a win over him would prove that, you know. So uh, I think I'm a dark horse in the PFL, um, you know, and, and I'm ready to bring it. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not really too worried what happens. I'm just ready to go out there and fight and, and prove that I belong there. So, Well, April 23rd, Cassius Clay College, you will take on Anthony Pettis to kick off PFL's 2021 season. Really appreciate you giving me your time today, man. Best of luck, even though you don't really need luck. Um, and, and note to the boxing world, you just heard the man say he's been training for PFL and MMA this entire time. What does that say about you guys? Like, this guy's focused on MMA training, and you came in, and it's a high credit and praise to you, Clay, that, uh, you know, you focused on one and excelled in another. So my hat's off to you, sir. Wish you all the best and hope we could talk after your fight. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day.